That's John Otway, and believe it or not, he's on his way to New Zealand. Yep, this will be the first time the self-proclaimed rock and roll's greatest failure has toured New Zealand, and you won't want to miss it. Here he is to tell us what to expect. Well, basically, um, I've got two hit records from the U um, in the UK, so I'm going to play both of those. Yes, and all all two of them. Yep. Yeah, all two of them, and their B sides, <laughs> and um, a lot of flops as well. <laughs> Very good, excellent. I, that, that sounds like quite a lineup planned. Yeah, now I understand I'm, you. Do I have to call you Doctor Otway now? I see you got. Oh yes, been... I know. I got um this year. I got um awarded an honorary doctorate. And what does that is, mean exactly? Um, it's a PhD in music. And, okay. Um, I mean, much to my bands, um, uh, you know, they're horrified because I'm the worst musician in the band. <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, but yes, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's, I have done, um, last year I did my 5,000th gig right. um, in, in London. And I think uh, Auckland's going to be my sort of 5,070th gig. <laughs> Not that you're counting. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so I, I was just watching your film, you know, the uh, the documentary that uh, that has you know, come out like 10, 15 years ago. And the one thing, I'm of a similar vintage to you, a couple of years younger, but not much. And to me, what your career seems to have managed to do is completely nail the punk ethos, if nothing else. You know, <laughs> I mean, doing it by yourself, just dealing with stuff as it comes up. You have an idea. You go, well, why, why can't I do that? Do yes, you look and at I, it that I, way? I know. And the punk era was sort of when um, playing badly and being shocking was fashionable. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing that even though it's gone out of fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, did you realize it at the time that you were kind of uh, doing, you were, you were kind of part of that thing or, or were you kind of always looking at yourself as off to one side um i think so i think the um the punk movement has sort of caught up with what what me and willie were doing you know right that sort of um you know chaotic um chaotic madness that uh yeah. um and, and what did like the, did, what did the clash or the sex pistols or the damn think of you do you know i think um I know John Lydon. John Lydon was a John Lydon was an Otway fan. Yeah, um, was he? <laughs> uh, I, all I mean, all of those people um, were around. You know, you know, sort of like knew each other and did festivals and stuff together. Um, I right. was on the same label. I was on the same label as the Jam. Right, right, right. Now, do you know a guy named Chris Perry? I think he worked for the label. Oh, Chris as well. Perry. Yes, he was a New Zealander, wasn't he? Exactly. That's why I bring um, him up because yes, and he was. Um, uh, he uh, he basically looked after the he, he was essentially looking after the jam. That's and, what I uh, thought. Yeah, and, and he was also our our A and R person as well. So we yes we, we knew him quite well. I think he went on to um with the I think he went on to deal deal with the cure. I think. Yeah. I yep. 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 That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. He he must have had some some thoughts about you as your career proceeded along for Polydor. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, you know. <laughs> The, the the jam was uh, the jam was sort of like one of his better signings. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Have you heard from him at all recently, or is that, is that um, all not, back not in the recently, day? Not recently, but we did, we did meet up uh, when I was did um, I did a support uh, to the Cure in um, Toronto, and um, he, he he was there then. We well, that must have been fun. When yeah, was that? Absolutely. How long ago was that? Oh, that, that was quite a long time ago. Let's um, go go back about 10, 10 15 years. Okay, well, these days, 10, 15 years is like yesterday. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> and speak, yeah, and speaking of, like, you, you kind of came out of the pandemic, all right? Did you, you I see you did a bunch of uh, live stream shows and all, uh, and uh, what, what else did you get up to? Did you get COVID? I should ask you. Um, I, I got COVID right at the beginning when the advice in Britain was, um, if, if you haven't been abroad or know anybody that's been abroad, it's not COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and it was and it was terrible because what i did because i wasn't feeling very well and that was the advice i thought i better go down the pub because i'm feeling grubby <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in the pub got it probably <laughs> I <think> so, yeah. 
Oh, well, at least they've, they've had it now. Although people are having their second and third bouts of it these days. So there you go. Yeah, but, I've, had, I've had four jabs, so I think yeah. I'm relatively okay now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been lucky so far, fingers crossed. But uh, everybody around me is dropping, or not dropping, but getting it. Anyway, um, so what, I, I'm curious, throughout your career, it seems like you have an idea and you do it. And you're like, well, why not? And whether it's playing at the Royal Albert Hall or renting a giant airplane to fly around or, you know, covering Disco Inferno. So what is it different? What do you think is different about you than everyone else? Everybody else goes, no, I, you know, you, you can't do that crap. You know, it's just um, I don't know. I mean, I, I look at my career in the same way as I look at my performances. I, I just imagine myself up on stage and going, you know, how would I impress myself? And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, what, what would I think would be a good idea? And right. um, a lot of bit of, there are a few sort of like um, ticking off boxes that you like to do. You know, you, you'd like to have a movie made of yourself. So nobody sure. else is going to make one. <laughs> so you, you make it yourself, you know. And I started, you know, um, I started off by pressing my own records because nobody else would press those. And when I was at school, I sort of, arranged and um, ar arranged, performed and won my own talent contest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because a, a lot of people don't do those things because they're afraid of failure. But that seems not to be a, 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 pro a problem for you. No, well, I sort of made a living out of being a failure because I saw right. it. <laughs> and doing it well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But failing wonderfully. <laughs> but really, I mean, there must be something in you that just goes, I don't care. And w um, were you like that as a kid? No, I, mean, I, I, I was stage struck when I was, um, when I was about nine, year, nine years old, when I was singing Lonnie Donegan songs in the school playground. And right. I decided then that I wanted to be, you know, a pop star, and, uh, which wasn't a very good idea because I, I, I couldn't sing very well or play very well. Right. Um, and my mum thought it was a really stupid idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but I managed it, um, even though I couldn't play very well or sing very well. Yeah, I, I noticed she commented about your singing abilities in one of the clips I saw. So there you go. Good old, good old mum. <laughs> well, that's a great thing about punk. I mean, I uh, like I said, I'm a similar age, and, and everyone should be in a band at least for 15 minutes, if not longer. I, I was briefly, and that, that was enough. But you have made, uh, you know, made it stick. And did you, in 1979, say, did you think you'd be here in 2023 talking about it, touring? And well, Yes, absolutely. I mean, my, my mom always thought, you know, at some point I'm going to have to go and get a proper job. And um, I mean, she lived till she was 90. And um, it was only in the last couple of years she suddenly realized that I might get through my whole life. Without, without having to do a without having to do a sensible day's work. <laughs> that's some, see now that's a success. That's not failure. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh... so. Are are you uh, other than touring uh, New Zealand? Are you thinking of recording anymore? Writing anymore? What what, what are you doing? What's your brain up to? Um, <laughs> Creativity. Well, Typically. Just at the moment, I'm sort of, um, I'm sort of planning. I, I'm actually going all the way around the world, and oh, sort of cool. like New Zealand's New, New Zealand's halfway through. So basically, this week I start off to go into, um, I'm doing a show in Gibraltar with my band for their thirtieth anniversary. Then going to Canada, Japan, New Caledonia, then New Zealand, then doing those Ad Adelaide dates, and then Thailand right. and back home in June. So. I'm sure I'll, I'll have thought of some really, really good ideas. <laughs> I'm well, sure you'll have some. Do me a favor. Don't bungee jump when you get here. I'll, no, I'll be, I'll be... see that, sir. Somebody told me that if, if you bungee jump, your face goes bright red because all the, all, the, um, sure. all the blood goes to your head. I don't fancy that at all. No, it doesn't seem like a wise move. I haven't done it. My daughter did it, and thankfully she didn't tell me before she did it, so she told oh. me after. Because <laughs> <laughs> then my head would have gone red anyway. So, <laughs> oh man! So yeah. So after so after your world spinning tour, what are you going to do? Do you are you thinking that far ahead? Um, yeah. Well, I've got a tour with with um, my guitarist Wild Willie Barrett. Oh yeah. How's he doing these days? He's fine, fine. We're doing um, 
it's, we're doing celebrating our the 50, 50, it is 50 years since we first did. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, since, since we first did the gigs. So, I don't know. I tend to put numbers on everything. Like last year, we did my 5,000. Well, everybody's doing, I mean, because it, we're in, uh, it's 50 years since 1973 and all these classic albums came out. And in 72, it was the same deal. And people are, you know, obsessed with classic rock these days and that in the 70s era. So it seems to be a thing. So again, you're riding the wave. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> All righty. Well, I can't wait to see you when you get up here uh, in Auckland. Hopefully, you'll get some time to look at the country a little bit as well as uh, places. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're there for the whole, um, whole week. We've got a couple of a couple of days off. Um, I can't wait, and it's, it is actually really quite nice. I've got quite a good, quite a few fans in New Zealand, and I think all been emailing will. me, being absolutely delighted that I'm coming over. Right. Well, it, the the Kiwi, you can probably tell from my accent that I'm not a, a, a natural born Kiwi. As a matter of fact, I was born in England, but raised in the States. But the Kiwi attitude is very DIY and do it yourself kind of thing. And she'll be right is kind of the, the, the watchword around here. So that seems to fit in with your what you're doing as well. So I, I'm sure there will be a s synergy going on there. Oh, no, I, love that. I, I mean, I, can't, I really can't wait to come over. I mean, and obviously, I've done a lot of practice for this. I mean, 5,000 and <laughs> You should be ready by now. Yeah. Thank God for that. <laughs> All righty. All righty. Well, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me. And we'll see you when you, when you get down here. I'm really looking forward to it. Cheers.